I have been inspired to make this video because of Dotesmite's newest video about how uh, it's, it's, a, it's a weird lie that the reason years feel shorter as you get older is because of percentages. Go watch her video. Um, but this inspired me to, to think about something that I've also, I also have a bone to pick with retards, right? We all have bones to pick with retards. But this, this, this retard is pretty much everyone. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to fucking increase the brightness, but there we go. That's better. Uh, this, this retard is everyone, including like neurology researchers and stuff, because the retard is a metaphor. And it's a metaphor that has become so prevalent that people accept it as fact rather than representation, rather than metaphor, which is what it is, right? We use met metaphors to describe things that we don't have better terms to describe, right? Like, uh, me metaphors are representations of reality, not the same thing as reality. Um, and this metaphor is that the human brain is a computer, that consciousness is software running on hardware, that the brain processes information like a computer processes information. Now, the first thing to get out of the way which I think some people are aware of, is the fact that uh, this is a common historical pattern, comparing the brain or thought to the most advanced technology you have access to at the time. So it is, it is fairly well known, I think, at this point, that um, before computers, the most advanced and intricate technology we had was uh, clockwork, clockwork mechanics and, um, you know, automaton dolls and stuff. And there were, there were philosophers at the time who said the brain probably works something like a clock, you know? It, the, these machines have some mechanical interface which allows them to perform complex tasks. We also perform complex tasks. Maybe we're like that. And before that, going back to like uh, 300 BC and, and, and when uh, hydraulic technology was invented and that was like the, the, the technology of the day, the human thought and actually the entire human system was also thought of in terms of hydraulics. If you ever wondered about uh, the, the Galen's four humours, right? What is that actually a metaphor of? It's a metaphor of hydraulics, you know? With hydraulics, you have to have a balanced system to keep everything homeostatic, right? If you have an imbalance in some hydraulic system, you also have an imbalance in this, the, the, the working of the system. You apply that, if that's how you understand your most complicated technology, you understand humans as complicated machines, complicated beings, then, you know, it's natural to apply the same metaphor to that and be like, well, your humans are out of balance. Similar thing going forward and going forward, right? And uh, now we think of the brain as some sort of computer and sometimes even worse as a neural network like, like artificial intelligences are, are, are made of. No. Like, a lot of the, that stuff is nothing like how the brain works, right? Like, the the most classic form of, of artificial intelligence is an evolution-based model, which is absolutely nothing like how the brain works. You know, that's like how evolution works, it's like how natural selection works, or artificial selection, I suppose, right? But then the more modern ones are reward-based models, which is also slightly closer to how the brain works, but nothing like how the brain works. Um... So let me, let me get this straight. Let me get this incredibly straight to you. Uh, you will not look into your brain and find a copy of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. You will not look into your brain and find, find anywhere in there. You will not find um, somewhere stored in your memory banks, in your hard drive, any of the information you know. You will not find a copy of the Mona Lisa in your brain, in, imprinted into the neurons. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, people think the brain is a computer because it runs on electrical impulses, and so do computers. The brain doesn't really run on electrical impulses, neither does the, any of you, really. They're electrochemical impulses, they are more, the brain is more of a chemical system than an electrical system. The, the electrical components are actually a, a, a tiny percentage, right? If, if you actually look at signals being sent between neurons, they're chemical signals, not a, they are electrochemical signals, but that means they have a chemical component and an electrical component, and rather than thinking of the chemical component, component as, as secondary, look at, look at how they actually work, look at how neurons actually work. You could, you could think of, you, it's more accurate to think of the uh, chemical component as the primary function and the electrical component, the electrical signal, being given off by a chemical process, right? The, the chemical process is the fundamental process of your brain, and if your brain is fundamentally a chemical process, that makes it 
uh, like any other organ in your body, right? The same way your liver is, is a chemical, uh, it functions chemically, right? Same, same thing. Your brain is not some special thing. Another thing that differentiates brains from computers, um, it, you, you, you might hear uh, retards talk about, uh, oh, if you, if you throw a ball up and catch it, I was going to throw something and catch it, but I don't, don't have anything. Here, this will work, right? All right, here, here's a, a kendama, right? A kendama, it's like a, a cup and egg, a cup and ball toy, right? If I do this, right, and I catch the ball on the thing, oh, well, your brain is such a wonderful, amazing organ. organ. It's a, such an amazing computer. What it does is it takes a look at the trajectory of the ball, and then it, it does a bunch of maths. It calculates. It calculates uh, fucking momentum, and it, it calculates mass and it calculates the gravity and, and no it doesn't do any of that it doesn't do fucking any of that that's not it doesn't do that your brain is the computer it's not doing calculations it's not processing information it, it doesn't i'm sorry what your if you think that you're you know that the the reason that the brain knows how the, how to catch the ball is because it has to do the math right do the actual math to estimate the speed and momentum of the ball and the effects of gravity on the ball and then command the body to move into a certain position. I, I don't know what to tell you. I've heard so many people repeat this lie. It's just a lie. It's just not how the brain works. Uh, even people who should know their shit, like, uh, they, they repeat this lie. Like, what the brain is actually probably... The, the, the answer is no one knows. The answer is no one knows how the brain is able to do this. But assuming its calculations goes against things we know about the brain. Isn't it much simpler to say, I, 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 I know how to catch the ball. All I need to do is pull the ball straight up and then simply align the two elements in my vision so that one is underneath the other. Right? That's, the, that's one thing. Secondly, I have practiced this a lot. Computers don't need to practice things. I don't know if you've noticed this. You tell a computer to do something, it just does it. You don't need to, you, you type a program into a computer to do maths. The computer doesn't need to practice how to do maths, it just knows how to do maths. Right? The, the same way, I, I'll hold on a minute, I had to practice to get to get good at kendama. I had to, to play kendama a lot. Is that, what is that? Is that my brain learning which algorithms to do? Is it getting faster at the end? Like, what is it? It's none of those things. It's absolutely none of those things. Because the brain isn't a computer. Um, you, again, it doesn't store and retrieve information. If I, you, you, you know what the Mona Lisa looks like, right? You, you've seen the Mona Lisa, you know it? Okay, draw it from memory. Draw it from memory. Oh, you know, a computer could do that. If you have a picture of the, if you have a copy of the Mona Lisa stored in a JPEG somewhere in your hard drive, you can retrieve that information and view it on a screen. Right? Why can't you? Why can't you do it? Why can't you do it as a human brain? You're supposed to be a super advanced supercomputer, right? Why can't you retrieve a per pixel perfect image of the Mona Lisa and, and create a representation of it? Your brain perfectly controls your body, remember? Your brain controls your body? That's another lie, by the way. Your brain, does, your brain and your body are, are one system, and it doesn't even make sense to look at the brain outside of the body. Another reason brains are different from computers. You could take a CPU out of a computer, or a hard drive out of a computer, or anything like that, right? You, you could take a CPU out of a computer, and it would still perform its function independently. You can't do that with the brain. You can't do that with the brain and the body. You can't even do that with the brain and the environment, right? Uh, you, 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 you can't take a section out of the brain and have it still perform its function. It, the brain and the body are one system, right? And the environment is also a part of that system. Um, you, you, it, it just doesn't work like that. A computer has um, secondary elements which uh, are support systems, right? Like a, like a fan, for example, or a case. You, you could argue the brain also has similar things. It has a, um, uh, like a fluid around it, it has a skull around it to protect it. Like these are, these are support systems, sure. But then it would make way more sense to think of the brain as a support system for the rest of the body, rather than the brain as a command. The brain doesn't command the body. There are, Okay, you, you know when you get hungry? You know when you get hungry? Yeah, that's your body commanding your brain, right? You, you, there's, it's, there's 
lots of evidence to show that your gut bi biota, your gut bacteria, the bacteria that live in your gut, can cause things like anxiety responses, can cause uh, low, low energy, low mood, etc. They, they literally send hormones to your brain, which make you think in certain ways. That doesn't sound like the way a CPU works. A CPU, or, you know, maybe a kernel or something, like something that a computer controller, right, just tells the computer what to do, and just does it. Right, there's no, there's no two way. There's, there's data processing. That's not what we're doing, right? There's, we're doing this one whole system thing. It's, it's weird, and then even that, it can't be said to be just one system. Uh, like, okay, I, let's say, oh, I feel like I am lacking in energy today. But why could this be? I didn't get enough sleep. I haven't had enough food. I haven't had the correct food. I don't have the correct food because I don't have the correct socioeconomic position to purchase the correct food. I, I have. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm breathing in polluted air, which is making me feel sick or something, so I don't have much energy. Um, I had some sort of childhood trauma, which gave me, uh, like, there are so many different f factors in just something simple, like, like, I, I feel a bit tired today, right? Like, oh, I couldn't sleep properly, and, uh, that, that was because, uh, when I was 12 years old, um, I know, I had some trauma, traumatic experience, and that, and I have, uh, you know, chronic insomnia caused by, by trauma, right? Like, that doesn't sound like something that could happen to a computer, ever. That is, that, that is ridiculous to even consider happening to a computer. Uh, you know, the same way, remember, remember, when a computer stores data, right, when a computer stores data somewhere, right, like in a, in a hard drive or whatever, it's storing that data on a physical medium, whether, whether it's a disk, you know, like a, like a disk, for example, here. Right, there's a disk in here, there's a little disk in here, and when you store data on this hard drive, what it does is a little sort of laser comes and etches little grooves into the the, the into the, the, the disk, right, into the spinning disk. And so all of the, the ones and zeros that make up the data on the computer are actually physically etched into this material. Again, where is the Mona Lisa physically etched into my brain? It's not, you'll never find it, it doesn't exist. Most people can't even draw a bicycle from memory. If you ask someone to draw a bicycle, most people can't remember the shape of the frame. I, I read a I read a study about this. You you uh the, 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 like um yeah you you try and draw a, a a bicycle frame and people get it backwards. People people put it people people draw it like um hold on let's see if I have a piece of paper right. People draw a bicycle like, like this. You ask them to draw a bicycle, they know that it has two tires, right? They know that it has two tires. They know that it has handlebars somewhere, right? And then they're like, well, this handlebar must be connected to the wheel, so that's one long thing. And then I know that the frame is a triangle, so maybe it's like it's like that, but hold on, that's not that's not a bicycle. That's not a bicycle, right? Because they don't even remember that the, the bicycle's like that, right? And even that doesn't actually look anything like a bicycle. <laughs> like, that's not a bicycle. Neither of those really look like bicycles. It's, it's, it's very silly. It's a very silly idea that the brain is a computer. The brain isn't processing information. What happens is, you, 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 here's things the brain can do, right? The brain can, can experience its environment. It can take in sensory input and, and, you know, it can experience its environment. And then it can, it can receive rewards. For example, that's one thing a brain can do, rewards and punishments. Um, it, it, you know, it, it can perform an action, it can do a behavior and be, be rewarded or punished for that behavior, either through internal punishment reward systems or extra, like, they're basically, this is the thing, you can't separate the brain from its environment. You can't take the brain out of the body, for example. Uh, like, this is, this is sort of a meme that transhumanists like, is the idea that you could, like, upload your consciousness or take your brain out of your body and put it in a robot or something like that. It doesn't make sense. Like, what, like... Think about all of the things your brain has to manage in your body. Like, there are so many system. Like, I don't... I'm not a, a neuro, neuroscientist. I can't say if it's the majority or the minority. I don't think they can either, because people don't know what areas of the brain do. Oh, yeah, we, here's the thing. People don't know what areas of the brain do. They have a very vague idea that some areas might be linked to some... Have you ever heard of the, the meme of, like, uh, left brain versus right brain thinking? That's a complete fabrication, by the way. I should just make, uh, make that clear. That is literally not... No one has ever claimed that's true. <laughs> like, that's just bullshit. Um, but another thing is, most of the information we have about the brain and how it works are... Uh, MRI scans, right? That's like the main way people tell what's going on in the brain. They put you in an MRI. 
uh, maybe like an fMRI, and then they, they ask you to do something, and then they look at which areas your, of your brain get increased or decreased blood flow. Now, here's the thing. Uh, in, an, in an MRI, it is impossible to tell whether lack of activity in the part of the, bra uh, in the, part of the brain uh, is a signal or not, is a factor in the signal or not. Like, like, maybe part of the signal is that a certain part of the brain gets active, and another part of the signal is that this part of the brain isn't active, it's turned off, and that's actually an important signal. There's no way to know with an MRI if that's a part of the signal or if that's just this brain, this part of the brain doesn't, isn't relevant. There's, there's, there's absolutely no way to know. Um, that, that's a massive flaw with MRIs. Secondly, we know that signals are sent via neurons, which are tiny cells. You can't see the cell level. The MRIs aren't detailed enough to see anywhere near the level of individual cells. So you couldn't tell what processes are actually being sent. You can just get a very, very vague idea that certain areas of the brain have increased blood flow, which gives you a very, very vague idea of what certain areas of the brain do. Like, it's, it's fairly logical to say that the amygdala controls, you know, our primal sort of fear responses and stuff. And it's fairly logical to say that the cerebral cortex, or uh, I don't know, that the visual cortex that, that deals with the processing vision of some kind. Not processing, but doing something with it. Like, that's all you can say. You can't, what you can't say is, um, ah, the, 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 the prefrontal cortex, that's the part that does logic, right? You can't say that. Because we just don't know. It's a lie. You can't. You can't say that. We don't even really know what what logic is in the in the way the brain does it. Like we we can't say. Um, okay. More more problems. More problems with the brain as a computer model. Um, hold on. Let me sip. Okay. So so yeah. Let me. I have a bunch. Of, I just sort of went. I've, I've been reading articles to help me not talk completely out of my ass, but. I, so I'm I'm making sure I'm I'm talking, saying saying things that make sense. But yeah, the brain the brain is is not a computer. What is it? Simple. It's a it's a biological thing. You know, the same way any other your heart is a but not a, not a computer. It's a biological thing. You know, people or your liver. Like it's a it's just a bio. What is an arm? Is an arm a, a machine like or like I don't know a robot? No, an arm is an arm. <laughs> yeah, you could call it a machine if you want, right? I'm reading Deleuze right now, so I like calling things machines. But, uh, you know, it's not a computer. That's that's the first thing. Um, secondly, uh, so, okay, so y you think the brain is a computer, and then why, why do you need to think about the brain at all? Well, one of the reasons that you would want to think about and study the brain is to help fix it when it goes wrong, right? Because the brain, just like any other part of your body, sometimes it goes wrong. And if you think, if you know the brain is a computer, you know, also computers go wrong. So we can fix the brain the same way we would fix a computer, by sorting out all the bugs, right? No, you can't do that. You, obviously, you can't do that. You, you, you can't use uh, all, all of the, um, the, the, uh, the meme methods of, of sort of like the, these these like hacks for the brain of like like for example magnetic stimulation where they, they put a big magnet on your brain and, and, and do stuff like that uh, they're all of, of dubious effectiveness um, another example would be electroshock therapy um, there, there seems to be a weird meme going around that like well it turns out electroshock therapy actually works and and, you know, we, we all freaked out about it back in the 50s, but if you put someone under anesthesia and give them electroshock therapy, it can actually help with depression. But yeah, maybe it can, maybe it can't. It's not clear. Uh, <laughs> if you actually re read the fucking studies, instead of just parroting whatever you read in an article, like, yeah, it's inconclusive. There seems to be some promise in this area. It's interesting. That's the actual, that's the actual conclusion we have is, yeah, there might be something interesting there. We, huh, there seems to be a little bit of promise there. Let's keep researching it. Not, um, oh, send that, send massive volts of electricity through me like a computer. No, <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Okay, that's, an, that's another thing. Um, secondly, so, so when you have a mental illness, right, or when you have something wrong with your brain, may, maybe something like, um, Alzheimer's or something, they're often physical problems, right, rather than the, the, the problems with, like, a code like you would expect in a computer. So, like, Alzheimer's is due to various proteins being in your brain and stuff like that, right? The same way any other physical problem in your body is generally caused by physical, biological reasons, not by computery reasons. Uh, and, and stuff like depression or anxiety or these, these more le less physical, supposedly, uh, brain ailments, right, um, 
th this is all a uh, uh, hold on I'll go I'll go a bit Mark Fisher on you real quick so like this 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 idea that the brain is this integrated um, system separated from the from its environment and the body and this this sort of holistic whole um, totality of, of a computer is uh, is a me is a it's a it's 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 a state state philosophy <laughs> it's like a um, it, it's a it's very useful for people who want to say that um, depression anxiety these things could not possibly be caused by problems in someone's environment like why are you depressed well because I, I have no no money and I'm not gonna be able to pay rent right <laughs> you know like I'm in a constant state of financial precarity ah we can't fix this we're psychologists we, we we're psychiatrists normally we we can't fix this uh, so let's pretend that that can never have any impact on mental health and and mental health is going to be going to be solved by by cognitive behavioral therapy actually and uh, and ssris ssris you, you may notice all of the um all of the the things that actually have any effect on the way the brain functions they they change its chemical function not its electrical function ssris uh, and anxiolytics and you know all of these things they they're, they're chemical not not electrical because the brain is not really an electrical system it's an electrochemical system there's a difference between those two words um next uh uh, okay, so so the brain doesn't process information. It doesn't it doesn't take information from the environment, look at it in bits, and manipulate it, and then create a, an ex, ex uh, an an output. Right, that's not how the brain functions. And the, nor does the brain really command the body. Uh, so you know, if you have a computer, right, and and you want to like uh, do do some really do do something really complicated calculations on it, like like play a high end video game. Which, check out my last video of my thoughts on that. Uh, let's say you want to do that, but oh no, your computer is uh, is a bit old and it can't quite run the newest graphics. What's it going to do? Well, it's going to try anyway. It's going to try really hard and it's not going to know not to try. And it's probably going to run, uh, just not be able to do it as fast, right? That's really the big thing that compu that, that makes a computer old or, or underpowered is that it can't can't really do it as fast. It can't really do it as... as um, you know, as, as quickly, and it can't do it as, uh, you know, with the correct heating requirements, it will overheat. So, like, if I got my old laptop down there to, to play a modern video game, somehow, <laughs> I would, uh, you know, it would overheat, and it would play at two frames per second. And then the game has an internal clock system, so that the game itself wouldn't slow down, it, just the rendering of frames would slow down, because they're clever like that. Older games don't have that. If you run a, an old game in a low frame rate, the entire game it, world is in slow motion. Um, but anyway, th that aside, th uh, that's not how that's not how the brain works with the body, right? <laughs> that's not how that works. If you have an old CPU, which you you know the brain is supposed to be a CPU, right? I assume you're not saying the brain is is what what are you saying the brain is when you say that? But it doesn't even make sense. It's a nonsensical fucking conjecture. It's it's absolute fucking nonsense, right? You you say the brain is a computer. Is it a CPU, right? Let's say the brain is a CPU and it commands, or I don't know, whatever. The, the brain does not command the body, is what I'm trying to say. If I get my brain to do something really difficult, like, I don't know, run uh, 100 meters in under 9 seconds. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it because I have to train my body for years uh, in order to achieve that. If, I, if, I just, if I'm just like, I've heard Paganini, I'll just pick up a violin and do it. No, no, you can't do it, right? Even, even if I, I spent years reading the sheet music and studying Paganini and whatever, if I never practiced the violin, if I never gained the physical muscle control, right, I couldn't do it. This is not how a commander should work, right? If I'm the brain, I should be able to command the body to do whatever I want. And the body also commands the brain constantly. I talked about hunger and gut biota earlier. There's also stuff like external environmental factors, like, um, you know, uh, you ever been you ever been on a really hot day and you just you just have no fucking you just can't do anything. Your thoughts are just so slow and um, uh, you get really irritated really quickly. You ever get that on a hot day? That's that's all stuff happening in your brain, but it's completely caused by environmental factors. And I haven't even fucking mentioned emotion yet. I haven't even mentioned emotion, which people just think is going to spring up in computers when they get advanced enough, which is just complete nonsense. Right, em emotion is a whole bunch of brain activity. If you if you do a study where you you take someone, um, uh, not affected by by like let's say you ask a random person to imagine themselves in a car crash, 
and then you you ask a person who has been in a car crash to imagine themselves in a car crash, you're going to see lots more brain activity all fucking over the person who has been in a car crash, right? You're going to see, you, you might see some sort of visual cortex activation in the person who, who hasn't been in a car crash. You might see them because they're trying to imagine something. Uh, uh, they might have some visual stuff. They might have some auditory stuff, you know. They, they might be doing all of these processes. But someone who's been in a car crash, well, they're going to have an amygdala response because they're going to have, you know, they're going to be thinking back to their trauma. They're going to get get anxious. They're going to be uh, having adrenaline released and stuff like that. They, they're going to have like a, a fear response. They're going to have memory responses, you know, wherever that happens, no one knows. But they're going to have memory, like they're going to have all these different emotional responses as well, right? And, uh, you know, even if you look at like uh, Valve's, uh, Valve talking about their, their um, like Gabe Newell and uh, talking about his... Um, brain computer interface projects like they might they, they want to do a thing where they can you know show the, the person a, f a fire and then have the, it feel hot to touch like right but the problem is when you start fucking with temperature in your brain do you know what it fucks with well it fucks with your um immune system right you, you your, your immune system is is affected by your um thermostatic system there's a name for it which i'm forgetting the name of uh uh, hypo something fucking don't remember but like there's there's a there's a the, like all of these systems are interconnected in a way that they aren't in a computer and yeah the biggest thing is that your brain just doesn't process information your, your, your brain you don't you don't take in information and do calculations on it and produce output the way a computer does it's not a Turing machine it's it's nothing like that it's it's uh it's not even close um so like we need a better metaphor or something. I don't know. The problem is, I, I've been saying all of this stuff like, the brain isn't this and it isn't that, right? So you're probably thinking, like, you in the same way I, the same thoughts I have, which is, um, I know the brain isn't this, but it's, that's the closest thing I have that I understand that I can, like, if it's not that, what is it? Like, how, how, do, okay, the brain doesn't process information, then how do I know things? No one knows. The, the answer is you don't need a boo who no one no one knows how you can remember things or know things. And we're probably at least fifty, hundred years away from being close. You know, there's there's they've did they've tried to do studies of understanding how like a um insect's brain works. They can't do it. Brains are just too fucking they can do simple stuff, like stuff that, that that humans were doing a long, 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 long time ago, which is like you poke a part of the brain and you see what breaks. Right? Like, they could do that with, with worms and stuff, but, or worms don't really have brains, but, you know, things that have brains. Rats, they can trigger, you know, various responses in, in rat and mouse brains, like reward responses and, and so on, right? Uh, by the way, dopamine isn't a reward chemical. Fun fact, uh, go Google that, because I can't, can't be able to talk about that in this video, a bit, bit beyond the scope. But uh, yeah, it turns out dopamine, not a reward chemical. Uh, go, go look it up. Or was it serotonin? Fuck. I don't, I don't want to misinform people. It might have been dopamine, it might have been serotonin, I, f I forget which one. One of them, not a reward chemical, <laughs> look at, you'll, 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 you'll do the research yourself, right? Uh, yeah, uh, hey, computers don't need reward chemicals, isn't that weird? Isn't that weird that computers don't have reward chemicals, and that the only things that we have, you know, only, only uh, neural networks have, have some reward system, but, the, you know, the reward systems for neural networks aren't actually anything like the reward systems for, for human brains. Because the reward systems for neural networks are hard coded, right? Um, you, you as a programmer, you, you say, you tell it, uh, oh, when you perform this activity, you know, you get a, that, that's a plus one reward point and you want to get more reward points. But, what did I just do? Oh, I had my hand covering the hole. With the, with the human brain, like when we're born, what do we have? We don't have, um, most of our reward systems aren't really in place. Like, you you have some some instinctual ones again. Computers don't have this. Um, when when a computer is created, it doesn't have any any, any uh, instincts, right? Humans have instincts. Uh, like uh, <coughs> you might have an instinctual reward, uh, in instinct to uh, enjoy food, right? You might get rewarded for eating food or, or drinking uh, breast milk, right? And you, you 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 suck on it. When you're a baby, you put something near a baby's mouth. They'll just turn and start sucking on it because that they have an instinct to do that. They have an instinct to hold their breath underwater and all, all of this stuff, uh, right? And uh, recognize faces. None of this stuff you, uh, computers have. Like that, it wouldn't even make sense to to think of a computer as being born with instincts. Uh, like that's not even 
Do you see how it, it wouldn't even make sense to think of a computer like that? Because brains are not computers. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll keep saying this. <clears throat> Uh, I think I'm done. It's been a fucking half an hour. I think I'm done.